There are three types of people in this world. Those who are good at math and those who aren't. Hi, my name is Jay Catalano. Put on your mathematical thinking cap and let's figure out how much it costs to make this entire concrete candle. Yes, the entire costs. And we're even going to talk about the hotly debated topic of how to value your personal labor costs and how that relates to the cost of goods of your item. You ready to get started? Let's go. This concrete candle took several elements to make, which costs money to produce. Not knowing your total cost of goods can cost you hundreds and possibly thousands of dollars. <laughs> What are the necessary costs we must determine for our concrete candle? Cement all, pigment, silver foil, water, sealant, wick sticker, wick, fragrance oil, and candle wax. Now these are just the elements to make the concrete candle, but there are other factors we must consider before we know exactly how much this concrete candle costs to make. But don't worry, I'll do my best to make it as simple as possible so you aren't feeling like your whole world is just turned upside down. Hey, what happened? What just happened? Let's break it down. Cement all. I added 55 pounds of cement all to this container, but I work in grams as my metric unit, so I need to convert that number to grams first. I know that one pound is equivalent to 454 grams. There are 55 pounds of cement all in this container, or there used to be, so let's do the math. 55 times 454 equals 24,970. That means that inside this box, there are, or used to be, 24,970 grams of cement all. Now I use 380 grams of cement all to make a concrete candle jar with a lid. So from the 24,970 grams of cement all in this box, we're going to divide that by 380 grams it takes to make one concrete candle jar. 24,970 divided by 380 equals 65.7105. Let's round that number up to 66. That means that I can create a total of 66 concrete jars with their respective lids from one 55 pound bag of cement all. But how much does it cost? I purchased the 55 pound bag of cement all for $27.69, which includes tax. However, I had to make a round trip to Home Depot, which is a distance of slightly over 20 miles. Considering that my car gets about 20 miles per gallon and the current gas price is approximately $3.50 per gallon, I'm going to add an additional $3.50 to the overall cement all price tag. Let's do the math. $27.69 plus $3.50 equals $31.19. Now, we're going to take that number and divide that by the 66 jars I can make from this box, which gives me a total of 0.4725. I'm going to round that number down to 0.47. And so that means that the cement all in this vessel costs me 47 cents. Let's move on. Pigment. This used to be a one pound bag of pigment from Glow Marvel, and we know that one pound is equal to 454 grams, being that I add approximately 10 grams of pigment to my mixture to make this red vessel I am going to take the 454 and divide that by 10. That gives me a total of 45.4. Let's round that number down to 45. That means from this bag, I can add red pigment to my mixture to make 45 concrete candle jars. But how much does it cost? This bag cost me $22.84, which includes tax and shipping. Now that we know that number, let's use that information and divide that by 45 pieces. $22.84 divided by 45 equals 0 0.5075. Let's round that number up to 0.51. That means that the red pigment in this concrete candle jar cost me 51 cents. Let's move on. Water. 
I normally use tap water to make my concrete candle jars, but how the heck am I supposed to calculate a small portion of water usage versus how much water is used by my family and me? That would be virtually impossible, so I bought a gallon of water for this example. Now I know that a gallon of water equals 3,785 grams. I use about 95 grams of water to make my concrete candle jars. And so I'm going to take the 3,785 and divide that by 95. That comes to a total of 39.842. Let's round that number up to 40. But how much does it cost? Well, this gallon of water cost me a dollar. So let's take that number and divide it by the 40 pieces I can make from it. And that gives me a total of 0 0.025. Let's round that number up to 0 0.03. That means that the water that I added for my mixture to make this concrete candle jar cost me three cents per vessel. Let's move on. Silver foil. Calculating the cost of using these silver foil flakes would be a very tough thing to do. The entire pile of silver foil weighs five grams. So we have to make an educated guess. The question becomes, how many concrete vessels can I add silver foil to? In my guesstimate, I would say 100. I might be off a few, but 100 sounds like a good number to use for our cost of goods example. But how much did it cost? This silver foil bag cost me $5, and I believe I can make 100 vessels with this bag. So let's do the math. $5 divided by 100 vessels equals 0 0.05. So that means that the silver foil that I added to this concrete candle jar cost me 5 cents. Let's move on. Sealant. I use various sealants and today I'm going to be calculating the cost of my sealant usage using RainGuard's efflorescence blocker. Now calculating exactly how much I use per vessel is a bit tricky because I use the dip, wipe, and let dry method. However, I calculated off camera that I use approximately 10 grams of sealant per vessel. This is a gallon jug of efflorescence blocker and we know that there are 3,785 grams in a gallon of water. Being that the viscosity of this sealant is similar to water, I'm going to presume it weighs the same. So being that I use approximately 10 grams of sealant per vessel and there are 3,785 grams of sealant in this jug, let's do the math. 3,785 divided by 10 equals 378.5. Let's round that number down to 378. That means that I can seal 378 vessels, give or take, using this gallon jug of efflorescence blocker. But how much does it cost? One gallon of efflorescence blocker costs $57.36, which includes tax and shipping. So let's take that amount and divide that by the 378. That gives us a total of 0.15174. To be conservative, let's round that number up to 0.16. That means that the sealant in this concrete candle jar cost me 16 cents per vessel. Let's move on. Silicone mold. You might be wondering why I'm including the silicone mold in the cost of goods when there will be a section for supplies later on. The reason I'm adding it in now is because the silicone mold is directly responsible for making my concrete candle jar and there are only a certain amount of times that I can use it. Basically, this silicone mold has a limited period of usability. Now the question is, how long can I use it? Or better said, how many concrete candle jars can I demold with this silicone mold before I have to throw it away? That's tricky, but I can tell you this, I have used this silicone mold at least 100 times and it's still holding up. So I'm going to have to make an educated guess for this example. And the number I'm going to use is, 250. That means that I believe I can demold 250 concrete candle jars similar to this before I have to replace it. I might be wrong, but that is the number I'm going to use because this is my show. <laughs> but how much does it cost? I paid $18.66 for the entire set, so let's do the math. $18.66 divided by 250 demolding times equals 0 0.07464. Let's round that number up to 0 
That means that each time I demold a concrete candle jar like this, it costs me eight additional cents. Let's move on. We have finally finished calculating the cost of goods for the concrete candle jar portion, and now we will be continuing to find out the cost of goods for the candle making portion. But how much does this red silver foil concrete candle jar with a lid cost me to make? The total is $1.30. Not bad. Let's move on. Wick stickers. This should be pretty straightforward. I bought 500 Wick stickers from Amazon and those stickers cost me $6.39. So let's do the math. $6.39 divided by 500 pieces equals 0 0.01278. Let's round that number up to 0 0.02 to be a little more conservative in our calculations. That means that the Wick sticker in this concrete candle cost me two cents. Let's move on. Candle wick. Here's another one that should be pretty straightforward. I bought 100 Aroma Light wicks for $15.95, and that includes both tax and shipping. So let's do the math. $15.95 divided by 100 pieces equals 0.1595. Let's round that up to 0.16. That means that the wick in this concrete candle cost me 16 cents. Let's move on. Fragrance oil. Now, depending on the type of fragrance oil that you use and where you get it from, this number is going to fluctuate a lot. The price of fragrance oil is all over the place. Some fragrance oils are much less expensive than others, and some are just astronomical in cost. So I'm going to use this bottle of fragrance oil for this example. There was a total of 16 ounces in this bottle, but I work in grams, so I have to do a little converting. I know that one ounce equals 28.35 grams, so let's do the math. 28.35 times 16 equals 453.60. Let's round that number up to 454. You've heard that number before. Now, I normally use 9% fragrance oil in my candle, and of course, I know the number in grams already because I do this quite often. Keep in mind that my 9% might give me a different gram weight than your 9%, depending on the size of your vessel. For me, that number is 22 grams. So let's do the math to figure out how many candles I can make with one 16 ounce bottle of this fragrance oil. 454 total grams divided by 22 grams I add to my candle equals 20.636. Let's round that number down to 20 to be a little more conservative. That means that I can make 20 concrete candles with this 16 ounce bottle of fragrance oil. But how much does it cost? This bottle cost me $35.61, which includes tax and shipping. So let's figure out how much my fragrance oil cost me per candle. $35.61 divided by 20 pieces equals 1.7805. Let's round that number up to 1.80. That means that inside this concrete candle, the fragrance oil cost me $1.80. Let's move on. Candle wax. Here's another one of those categories that can fluctuate in price. Candle wax. Inside this box fits 45 pounds of candle wax. There are nine slabs of candle wax similar to this slab here. Each slab weighs five pounds, or in this case, approximately 2,250 grams. So 2,250 times nine slabs equals 20,250 grams. Okay. Now, I use 230 grams of wax per vessel, and if you want to know how I calculate my candle wax for each vessel, check out this video right here. Now, let's do the math. 20,250 grams of candle wax divided by 230 grams in this vessel equals 88.043. Let's round that down to 88. That means that I could add candle wax to 88 vessels from this 45-pound box of wax. But how much does it cost? I paid $148.60 for 45 pounds of candle wax, and that includes both tax and shipping. So let's do the math. $148.60 divided by 88 vessels equals 1.6886. Let's round that number up to 1.69. That means that the candle wax in this concrete candle jar cost me $1.69. 
Let's move on. All right, let's see where we're at right now. Cementol, 47 cents. Pigment, 51 cents. Water, 3 cents. Silver foil, 5 cents. Sealant, 16 cents. Silicone mold, 8 cents. Wick sticker, 2 cents. Candle wick, 16 cents. Fragrance oil, $1.80. Candle wax, $1.69. The total equals $4.97, but there are a few other costs we have to consider. Don't worry, I'll make it as fast and painless as possible. We have five categories we have to think about. Supplies, material and cleaning, rent or mortgage, utilities, inventory loss, damage items or slippage, and labor costs. Now, in order to calculate any of these true costs, you and I would have to go through a daunting process of figuring out what percentages can be attributed to our cost of goods. For example, if 25% of your living space is used for making concrete candles and your monthly mortgage is $1,000, then $250 can be allocated to the rent mortgage category. However, determining the cost per item created in a year can be challenging due to the complex calculations involved. Hopefully you see how complicated that can be, but I highly suggest you do so when you get a bit of free time. However, for this example, I'm going to make a guesstimate on each category. So let's start with the inventory loss, damaged items, or slippage category. These costs are the costs such as the concrete candle jar that broke when you demolded it, the excess candle wax you threw out when you poured your candle, and the excess dribble of fragrance oil that ran down the side of your bottle. Undoubtedly, you will have these and other losses that will not and cannot translate to your financial gain as you had to take a loss for those things. For this category, I'm adding a percentage for inventory loss, damage items, or slippage. That amount will be 10%. So, What's 10% of our total we calculated thus far? Let's do the math. $4.97 times 10% equals 0.497. Let's round that number up to 0.5. That means that we're going to add 50 cents to our cost of goods. So the new total is now $5.47. The next category is the supplies category. The supplies category is your mixing bowls, your utensils, paper towels, cleaning spray, and things of that nature. I'm going to attribute 10 cents to my cost of goods for this category. Next up is the utilities category. The utilities category is your light and electricity that you use while making your concrete candle. I'm going to add 15 cents to my cost of goods. Next, we have the rent mortgage category. This is the monthly fee that you pay in the space that you use to create your concrete candles. If you are creating your concrete candles at home like I am, then mortgage, because I don't pay rent, will be what I attribute to my cost of goods. I'm going to add in 25 cents to my cost of goods because that category is the most expensive of the three thus far. All right, let's add that up. So as of now, we have a total of $5.47 plus 10 cents plus another 15 cents plus your last 25 cents gives us a total of $5.97. So our new total is $5.97, but we have one last category. The one category I get a ton of questions on, personal labor costs. What are personal labor costs? The personal labor cost is related to the time and energy you put into creating your concrete candles. Basically, it asks the business question of how much am I worth? This is a tough category to calculate and not really needed in your cost of goods, but I will explain why it's not needed and then add it in anyway, because who cares what's not needed? Now, there's two reasons why it's not needed. Reason number one, as a sole proprietor, if that's what you are, your business is treated as an extension of yourself and your personal labor costs are not considered direct costs of producing goods, which means they cannot be included in the cost of goods sold or claimed as business expenses. 
However, if you are operating as a separate legal entity, like a corporation or LLC, and paid yourself as an employee, your labor costs would be considered a part of your cost of goods. So if you are a sole proprietor or corporation or LLC and don't pay yourself as an employee, including your own labor costs would be purely voluntary as they are not tax deductible business expenses. Reason number two, unless you have a really well-known brand where you can dictate your prices like Kim Kardashian, you are going to have to charge what the market is willing to pay for your items, regardless if you add in your personal labor costs or not. For example, if everyone in your area charges or is only willing to pay $25 for a candle, it wouldn't matter if your cost of goods were $15 or $5 as the market has dictated the price. But who cares all about that? Let's add it in anyway because we're rebels and we don't care what anyone says. Ah. Now the first thing we need to do is figure out what the hell we think we're worth. Boy, that's a tough one, because if you put a gun to my head, I'm worth a gazillion dollars, you know what I mean? <laughs> but to make it simple, we're going to say we are worth a little over the minimum wage in the US. So let's price ourselves at $20 an hour. Now, how many concrete candles can you make in an hour? Well, that's a tough one to answer too, but I did a little calculating behind the scenes and I feel that I can make approximately 20 concrete candles in one hour. Now that's just the labor, not the waiting, not the cure time, not the dry time. <laughs> it might take me 10 minutes to pour 20 concrete candle jars. And even though I have to wait three hours to demold those 20, I'm not counting the three hours. Does that make sense? I hope so. Okay, so let's do the math. $20 an hour divided by 20 candles is one. So that means that I need to add in one more dollar on top of my current cost of goods total of $5.97, which now gives us a new total of $6.97. Let's round that number up for fun. So that means that this concrete can will cost me $7 to make. Are there other costs involved? Absolutely. The candle and warning label, the rubber protective feet, and a few other items that I have upstairs in my noggin. But those items, along with those calculations, will be for another day. And take a look at these videos that are popping up now. They're gonna help you in your candle making journey. Until next time, thanks for watching. Ciao.